powered by the Montana Television Network. This is Montana This Morning from Montana's News Leader. Well, good morning and thanks for starting your Wednesday off with us. I'm Justine Stewart. And I'm Louis Stewart. Hopefully having a good start to your day. And Justine, grab those jackets. Bundle up before you head out the really door. Really chilly this morning. Very cold out there. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of 20s. Some places yeah. getting uh, close to the teens this morning. So you're going to want to bundle up. It's one of those days, especially the further north you go, it's going to be 20s this morning, then we're talking about 50s and 60s oh, really by this afternoon. So it's going to be nice next couple of days. We are talking about, though, a chance of some showers in southwestern Montana as we roll into the afternoon time. So here's your forecast headlines. Increasing clouds for southwestern Montana by this afternoon, and that means some scattered shower opportunities on Wednesday and Thursday. Like I mentioned, though, northwestern Montana is going to see sunshine and beautiful temperatures all throughout the day. We are going to warm it up this week, 50s and 60s today through Friday, and then tracking another weekend disturbance, bringing in more scattered showers and temperatures dropping back down into the 40s. Here's your Wednesday forecast. Pretty nice out there. 55 in Missoula with increasing clouds. 59 Kalispell, 53 Hamilton, 57 in Polson. The tragedy in Las Vegas is renewing the gun debate on Capitol Hill. In a late night press conference, Las Vegas officials revealed they found nearly four dozen guns stashed in three locations by the gunman. But they also described how the shooter legally modified his guns. Seth Lemon has more. ATF agents say police have recovered 47 various weapons owned by the Las Vegas gunman. The gunman purchased rifles, shotguns, and pistols. Investigators say none of the guns appear to be homemade. Instead, police found 12 bump stocks, devices added to semi-automatic weapons that allow rapid firing like fully automatic ones. Bump fire stocks, while simulating automatic fire, do not actually alter the firearm to fire automatically, making them legal under current federal law. The shooter, perched from his 32nd floor hotel suite, had a clear shot at the 22,000 people packed tightly into the concert, including Bruce Ewer, who survived. Selfish, evil man, and he's going to try to shoot. It was like shooting human fish in a barrel. House Democrats plan to hold an event on the Capitol steps this morning, pushing legislation to strengthen background checks and establish a congressional committee on gun violence. Although opinions on gun control are split, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan pointed to new legislation being implemented. Mental health reform is a critical ingredient to making sure that we can try and prevent some of these things from happening in the past. We need to have that conversation, but right now it is about, for me, bringing relief to those families that are still looking for their loved ones. Hundreds still trying to figure out if someone they know was a victim that day. Seth Lemon for CBS News, Capitol Hill. Police from Chicago to Austin, Texas say they are increasing their presence ahead of large events planned in cities this weekend across the nation. After several weeks of interviews, Montana University leaders have announced that Seth Bodner has accepted the offer to become the 18th president of the University of Montana. This is a big announcement as he was considered the non-traditional candidate. He was the only one without a doctorate or no long tenure in higher education. However, his six years with General Electric and eight years in the military give him more of a business and leadership background. You know, coming from the business side, he's able to look at things differently, and I think that's always good. And I think that he is a, a good listener and someone who I think will take the time to get to know the university and really understand what it needs and then be able to make decisions to move forward. During his public forum, he said he recognizes a rift between UM administrators, faculty and students following a series of budget concerns, decreasing enrollment and possible layoffs, and wants to close these gaps. Last week, UM announced an increase of 2% in their freshman class, something that Crady hopes the new incoming president will help build on. Well, I'm looking forward to that. That's something that I think is really important, and I think he'll be received really well by members of, uh, you know, different high schools within the state and uh, state leaders, and so I'm very excited. Bodnar was one of the four finalists to fill the post, which Sheila Stearns has been filling in on an interim basis. He'll take over for president on January 1st. 
The results are in for a $26.5 million school bond in Whitefish. Voters overwhelmingly supported the bond, which will allow officials to begin planning a new school to replace the existing Muldown Elementary, which is 51 years old. Ballots still need to be counted, but Superintendent Dr. Heather Schmidt says remaining ballots will not be enough to sway the vote, calling it the fiscally responsible choice for a less disruptive, more efficient, and better value for Whitefish. Schmidt says the money will be used to replace a building experiencing structural issues specifically with roofing and heating. The goal is to open a new elementary school by 2020, which will be about 84,000 square feet and could house over 750 students. Congress missed a deadline last weekend to reauthorize the Children's Health Insurance Program for next year. The program, known by its acronym CHIP, funds health coverage for 30,000 Montana kids in low-income and middle-income families. State health officials say if the program isn't reauthorized, Montana would have to come up with the $96 million a year that it doesn't have. But Montana's only congressman, Republican Greg Gianforte, says he's confident Congress will act quickly to extend that program. In fact, a House committee is scheduled to vote today on a bill that extends the program for five years. A similar measure introduced last month in the U.S. Senate failed to pass before CHIP authorization expired last Saturday. Governor Steve Bullock says federal money is still funding that program through January in Montana, but that Congress needs to act. And it is part of that partnership in federalism where Congress needs to do its part of the job and the state pays its share. So I still remain hopeful that they will indeed reauthorize CHIP. It's been a program where Democrats and Republicans have recognized what a big difference it makes. Right now, federal funding pays about 98% of CHIP costs. The Glacier National Park Conservancy is asking for your help in raising $100,000 for park projects and programs during Give Back to Glacier Week. MTN's Jack Ginsburg has more on what the week is all about. Glacier is why so many people move here and set up their businesses here. We know that Glacier is the main economic driver actually of our entire state. All week long, the Glacier Conservancy is hosting a brown bag lunch speaker series with park staff speaking about what new projects are going on inside the park, what the certain speaker does as a job, and many more ranging topics. It's really a chance for the public to come out and speak to the park as well. The week is a celebration of all the good the park provides for the public. Along with that, the Conservancy is asking for help through funding. While we're celebrating, we're also asking the community to step forward and help us fund some of the really critical projects that wouldn't happen without public support. The Conservancy is hoping to raise over $100,000 and the donations have already started as the Thomas O. Brown Foundation has announced they will match every donation up to $50,000. Basically, every donation, like if you give $10, you're giving $20 because they're going to match it this week. So pretty exciting for us. When talking to Isinger about what makes the park so special and why people should donate to give back, she referred to how busy the summer was while people were still able to find remote areas in the park. If you're a local, you know that you can get back and you can find your special spot in Glacier. Even, even when it's crowded for us, it's still a pretty big, beautiful park that we want to celebrate. Something that a lot of people, including myself, never hear or fail to recognize about the park is that it is actually the most intact ecosystem in all of North America, which is why it is so pristine and remote. Reporting in the Flathead Valley, Jack Ginsburg, MTN News. The next stop on the speaker series will be held at REI in Missoula with Park Superintendent Jeff Mao. All right, let's send on over to Lewis now this morning. He's standing by with your forecast. All right, thank you, Justine. Good morning, everyone. A beautiful day yesterday. The sky started to clear. You still had this nice fall-like colors with a little bit of snow on the mountains. Fantastic picture sent into us by Rick. Beautiful during the afternoon. The winds picked up slightly and temperatures remain cool, but overall not a bad day yesterday and temperatures are going to continue to increase as we roll throughout the rest of the week. How about some of the temperatures around Montana? Look at Haver, nine degrees waking up this morning. They got around 15 inches of snow yesterday or uh, uh, a couple days ago and then yesterday. And now they're waking up with single digit temperatures. We're looking at 20s and 30s all across the state. So it's really chilly this morning. And then as we take a look at uh, a little bit closer here, we're at 26 in Missoula, 33 in Polson, 31 in Kalispell, 27 in Hamilton, 21 in Phillipsburg, 28 waking up this morning in Salmon. So yes, grab those jackets, bundle up. 
before you head out the door this morning. Now the skies have started to clear. So as we look at our radar, this is one of the reasons why we're seeing such cool temperatures. Usually the clouds that we see overhead can act like a blanket. As those move out, any heat that built up, even the little bit, uh, little amount of heat is able to escape in the atmosphere. So you can see as most of Montana is waking up with clear skies, it's what we call radiational cooling. That's why we're really chilly this morning. What we are watching though is this system right here. That's going to continue to track off to the north and east, bringing rain shower possibilities for southwestern Montana by the afternoon time. So we can look at this at your hour by hour forecast. First, we'll go to Hamilton. Notice sunny skies this morning, temperatures in the 20s and 30s, clouds slowly increasing, will be mostly cloudy by the afternoon and temperatures topping out in the lower 50s. Head further north, head up towards Kalispell, sunny skies all across the board. So it's going to be cool this morning. Then though, by the afternoon, we'll make it up into the middle and upper 50s. So it should be a really nice fall day the further north you go by this afternoon. Here's your seven day forecast for Missoula 55 today, 56 tomorrow with about a 20% chance of a shower, 63 Sunday. Then we cool it off with scattered showers rolling in for the weekend. Kalispell 50s today and tomorrow, 60s on Friday. And then there we go. Temperatures dropping back down in the 50s Saturday, Sunday and Monday in Hamilton. About a 30% chance of seeing a shower today, tonight, tomorrow, 64 Friday. 50s and even some 40s by the weekend. A nice afternoon to get outside maybe after work today. Yeah, today, tomorrow and Friday mm -hmm. should be really nice, beautiful fall like weather. Just All right, well, thanks, Lewis, and stick around. We're right back after this, but first, here's some birthday shout outs for you this morning.